So today but we are back to Vintage Audio and this is part two which we're doing first. Normally you do part one first but we needed to fast track the chassis on this. So we're doing part two which is the servicing the chassis. And this is an HMV Stereo Master 2401. Stereo Master Radiogram from 1969-1970 and what Mr Chippy did yesterday we haven't done the before and after on this we're just doing an after was to change all the capacitors it's about 16 of them so if that's in shot let's look at the camcorder it is just that was one of those and then we've changed that one and 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 any of this you can see and then on the voltage regulator on the power supply board here you've got I think there's two on there I'll just look at the circuit diagram when I find the right page, that's the layout. I was on the right page. Yes, so there's two on there. And what this does is to provide 25 volts regulated to the amplifier, which is approximately 7 watts per channel. RMS. Uh, this isn't pretend watts. We all go into those shops, don't we, where they sell little computer speakers that give out 64 watts, and when you work it out, they mysteriously are actually quarter of a watt. So, hopefully, that meter's in shot. I'll just check it is. Yes. And presumably this is positive earth. Because Mr. Chippy did all this. And so the output meter goes towards the floor. So hopefully we've got the power supply to 25 volts. Well, obviously 24.9, I'd rather it be that 0.1 low than 0.1 high. So I just thought that was, uh, we'll check that that was set up right. So after we've changed all the electrolytics, we don't switch these on, you know, until we've changed all the electrolytics because you can end up with blowing all the transistors, as you know. We've got a whole pile of those horrible black capacitors. And if we put the ESR meter on, Especially if we manage not to switch it on. Let's see what this one reads. Well, it should be 400 and it's reading 1500. And that's always indicative that it's dried up. Let's put another one on. 
Put one of the small ones on. Probably be the only one that works. 44, what's it supposed to be? 8. So another one that's dried up. No good at all. So, transistors. So we've got the amplifier working nicely. And then we were confronted by the radio, which uses those AF116 transistors, as these early stereo masters with the radio do. So in the front end we've got, whatever it says in the manual, I should have been prepared with that. Um, BF 160s on the front end and then the IF ones are AF 116 which are notorious for growing internal tin whiskers so we changed the two capacitors three capacitors on the on this RF board there and we we're greeted with a dead set and it's actually quicker to take these transistors out and put them on the transistor tester and I'll just show you one we took out which is kicking around on the bench somewhere well I was going to show you how awful the Gone and lost in the meeting here. I was going to show you how awful the transistors were, two of them, which were leaky. Uh, one was uh, showing us two diodes, which I know transistors are theoretically, but it had no gain, uh, which was that one. That showed okay, so we put it back together again, and that showed okay. Put it back together again it still didn't work so we did a, a check with the voltages on there and we found that uh, uh, we'd got emitter and collector the same so we whipped it out again and substituted it anyway for a, a new old stock um, transistor which we'd also tested and that ran burst into life on retesting it it showed us two zeners so you know you heat it up with a soldering iron and it works for five seconds this is what can be the problem. I'm actually going to research what Russian equivalents are because I understand the Russian equivalents don't grow tin whiskers. So that's brought the radio back into operation. And then I was greeted, we cleaned the controls like you would do, we were greeted with the four position switch here because you've got on the first position, let's just kind of zoom out so we can see the control panel that's about to go through the company dishwasher so you've got on our base volume uh, treble volume stereo mono switch and the first position on the four position switch here is gram um, tape which is the five pin in socket or whatever auxiliary you want to plug into it it's bi-directional um, FM radio and external which expect you to plug a AM transistor radio into through the mono jack. Never be tempted to plug your um, Walkman or whatever into that because it is mono. So what we've done, uh, what we discovered, is that the switch will only work into three positions, um, and the position it didn't work in was gram. Well, being a radio gram, it's quite useful for the gram position to work. So I took the wooden front panel off. I took the uh, escutcheon off, which I've just shown you, took the switch off, and in taking it off, something fell out and fell on the floor, and then it worked. So I presume there was a uh, a nut or a, some foreign object stuck in the works. So we didn't have to go any further with that. I had visions of having to kind of painstakingly take that apart, because it would be quite a swine to unwire it and rewire a new one, um, you know, really. So... The space here would be for the other model, and those of you who know about these will know the 2402, 
this being the 24 one is the stereo version and just here you'd have another board which is the stereo decoder as it's shown in the circuit you've got the second board there and that connector where there's a blanking plug uh, it would plug in just there so this is the mono version and they did this with quite, with quite a few the first one they did the um, 20 hmm can't think of the first one but whatever 28 23 28 it's a mono only radio and then with the 2 330 that's the stereo one 23301 is the mono one same radio again different amplifier and then they did it with this one then they did it with the next one they did it with the 2411 and the 2412 offering that optional plug-in decoder board and what people don't realize that in the late 1960s certainly in the UK here there was only Radio 3 which is broadcasting classical music ever broadcasting in stereo and it is it's as, it's as far it's as relatively close as the 1990s that all the stations went on to stereo and that the last one was actually Radio 1 which is supposed to be contemporary pop music for those of you who don't know what the lineup is in the UK Radio 1 BBC Radio 1 is contemporary pop music BBC Radio 2 is kind of easy listening pop music Radio 3 is classical music and Radio 4 is speech and news and they're all advertisement free then you've got BBC local radio stations we're in Lincolnshire here but I'm out of range of BBC Radio Lincolnshire their transmitter from Lincoln is out of range I'm 26 miles away and I've got a hill in the way and their repeater for Grantham is only seven miles away but I've got another hill in the way so I used to listen to Radio Lincolnshire on AM but they've now knocked off the AM transmitter they have some bizarre notion that people are going to buy digital radios and hey guess what they don't work here either so rant over so we ended up changing two of those AF116 transistors to bring the thing back into operation so it was capacitors and the transistors so what we're now going to do is to determine if we've got something like equal output power we always change you know everything's uh, what's the word symmetrically you know if you're doing a repair and you found that that capacitor was faulty let's move the camcorder around if if you found that capacitor was faulty and changing it repaired the item will you change that one as well or there will be a tunnel imbalance so we always make thorax to make sure everything's symmetrical so what I'm going to do is if this is in shot we've got a small signal generator we'll just um, bring that out a bit not sure whether we can see the yeah we've got a little realistic um, output power meter there so I'm going to switch on the signal generator we'll put this onto auxiliary input so we've connected our small audio generator which is just off the camera there to the back of the external mono radio input socket hopefully the things in mono we've selected that on the selector you can hear the tone which I can change and hopefully we can just see the output meters there we've got it in, onto what we would call industrial speakers which are under the bench you know disco PA type speakers which are capable of about 200 watts because Mr Chippy does guitar amplifiers on this bench and if we turn the volume up I'm going to turn the volume up to full on the product I've got the tone controls at um, zero position center and I say there isn't a balance control on these, which is the only disappointment. And so I'm going to now adjust the amplitude on here. I think he's expecting about... He'd probably tell me in there, probably about 200 um, millivolts, something like that. Now these are supposed to be 
five to seven watts ish. So it, runs, it goes into distortion at that point. So you can see one channel's just slightly lagging the other. Well, that's tolerancing in components. It's just about doing 10 watts, isn't it? Out of interest, you can let's just put it to one, and let's go up a scale, because these are hi-fi. They're supposed to be 20 uh, hertz to, to 20,000 hertz, as far as the amplifier goes. So let's take it up to. Oh, let's go, go down first. And it's still reading on the meters at 20 hertz. It's that's 30, 20, that's 28 hertz. So it's quite consistent right down to 32 hertz with the power. Let's change it over to the other setting. So we're 3200, 3.2k, 10,000 hertz, still cons relatively consistent. Now up 15,000, it's gone beyond the speakers now. I, I'm no longer resolving anything in my ears. And it drops off at 20,000 hertz. So yeah, it certainly does the business. And then we'll turn that back down. In fact, we'll turn it off. So that's the test of, of that over. Uh, we'll pop it onto radio. Now we're in an atrocious position for radio. I'm going to turn the volume down a bit. Um, that's that position. You can tell, listen, when a certain area of the crowd, like where he was like moving towards them, because like. <laughs> Just to be in his presence. That was Jonas Blue, Liam Payne, and Lennon Stone. Oh, just do the bass. Polaroid the travel. Awards. When the Gemma Collins thing happened, me and you were just stood there like, what is going on? It was one of the maddest things I've ever seen. It was so weird, wasn't it? But for kind of oh. amazing. That was someone's idea. I know. It's so funny. So as you can see, that's working a treat. And then back onto the newly working ground position and that's ready to be connected to the uh, back in the unit with the turntable and again we can prove this with the signal generator so if I pop the negative wherever it's gone onto there mono there that's better so we're showing at that volume level let's just set it to, to about five watts there and that's on our right hand channel and then on our left hand channel so you can see that's working fine if I switch it to mono It'll put both in parallel. So there we are. That's put the HMV Stereo Master 2401, which is the one with the mono radio without the decoder there, through its paces after a full overhaul. Thank you for watching.